how have things been going under under Rigney? It's been awesome to work for Coach Morris. Um, you know, had our first meeting as a staff, got to see all the new faces in the building. It's exciting times for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, we talk about our football organization um, going into this off season. We talk about free agents, the draft, putting together our staff, and our best days are yet to come. I mean, are you kind of like just helping people show people around like at this point since half the staff is, doesn't know where anything is probably? The more that you could do around here, right, Mike? <laughs> I'm messing. Um, no, it's, it's been good. You know, being part of this staff and being here the last three years, going on to year four, it's always great to help other people out. You know, there's things that you learn, whether you're in the building, around neighborhoods, when it comes to new families. It's always good to have, lend a helping hand when it comes to that. Whether you have new coaches, new families, and where you know where the printer's at, all those different things. So try to make everything a little bit easier for everybody. Obviously, whenever you know, you've been through coaching transitions before. Yes, sir. Uh, when everything happened, did you have a sense that maybe you would be back? Like, at, at what point do you kind of say, okay, this is maybe going to happen and I'm going to stay versus, you know, I mean, there were points that you, know, you would interview in New England and there were had other places. Was there, was there ever a sense that, like, okay, this is going to maybe be how this goes? You know, ideally, you know, coaching football, coaching in the NFL, you, that's what you sign up for. It comes with the business, it comes with the territory when coaching in the NFL is very transactional. It can be very transactional. Um, having a family, you know, ra raising my kids out here, ideally you don't want to try to move them a lot. And, and as a professional, that's my personal life, and as a professional, um, this is a great organization to work for. So if there was any opportunity to stay, those were things that we were going to highly consider as a family and in myself as a coach growing as a professional in this in this business. When it comes to that, like hoping and wishing, all I could do as a person, as an individual and as a coach is make sure that these three years as I've been here and as I've been here as a coach, I put my best foot forward. I could wake up knowing that I worked my tail off, very respectful to everybody in the building. Um, and I put my best foot forward and my, my intent and everything that I do as a coach was for the players in this organization. There's no players, there's no coach. So knowing that, um, I couldn't be fixated on what was going to happen in the future. All I could do is just put my best foot forward knowing that I, you know, did everything I could to help our players, help this organization, and then whatever happens, happens. And I know that, you know, the man up above, he'll never put me in a position that I can't handle. So those were things that I process and as I went through going into this offseason. Did, did you have a prior relationship with Raheem or the connection? Um, <clears throat> I guess how does that work where uh, you talk philosophies and uh, how do you seal a deal with him? Hey, I've known Raheem for a while. I never worked with Raheem, but we have uh, mutual colleagues and friends that he's worked with, that I've worked with, that are that were some guys that were mentors of mine, and it just ended up working out that way. I'm very excited to work with Coach Morris. Uh, he's an amazing in individual. As you talk about him as a person, as a man, as a father, a husband, as a coach, um, he's a multiplier. And leader. I believe that leaders build leaders. Sorry, I got, got some construction going on in the back. Um, <laughs> leaders build leaders, you know, when it comes to that. So any opportunity to work with a, with a coach, a professional, a Super Bowl champ like Coach Morris, those are opportunities that you can't pass up. And I'm very fortunate and very blessed to be a part of this organization, this coaching staff. I know it's um, very early on and everyone's still getting their feet underneath them, but when Raheem leading the way, what feels the most different just initially off the bat about how he'll operate this organization? Uh, his energy. You know, he's been here before. Um, this, this organization mean, means the world to him. And for him to come back in a different capacity in a permanent role, you can see how much he cares for everybody in the building and how welcoming it is for everybody that's seeing him coming back into the building. Um, you can see him, he's a great football coach. He's coached on both sides of the football, very knowledgeable, um, very passionate about his craft and helping others. And you know, you, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for others helping me. Same thing with Coach Morris. So he understands that, and he understands the role that it takes to help you know build our coaching staff, build our players, and put us in better positions to going going forward. But the energy has been great, and very excited. He does. He's done a great job of being very collaborative. Like he's he's spoken about prior and uh, prior conferences, uh, press conferences, and that's real. He's very collaborative. He wants to talk through things. As and when we leave that room, we're leaving with one answer. But it's okay to you know disagree about certain things and have 
your whys and why you want to do certain things, whether you're talking about offense, defense, special teams. But it's very collaborative and it's great energy. He seems like a guy that's just very personable and kind of lets his walls down, uh, which is welcoming to other people. Mm -hmm. As someone who coaches alongside of him, how does that make you feel in a sense of being able to speak freely, uh, yeah. to be more collaborative? I mean, now, I'll say this. What, what was your name again? Sorry. Bailey. Bailey. Nice to meet you, Bailey. Um, we've, we've been collaborative here, you know, with the prior, my, the prior head coach here, with Coach Smith, um, and speak freely. So that, that doesn't change. It's just the individual does change. That is real. That Coach Smith is different than Coach Morris. Having that new relationship with Coach Morris is, is awesome. And there's no shortcuts to relationships. So as I'm building – as everybody in this organization and our coaches are building our relationship with Coach Morris, it doesn't just happen overnight. But it is welcoming, too, when a guy comes in, when a coach comes in, and he's he's very op open to a lot of different things, and he wants to speak through everything. Because, again, as I said, there's no shortcuts. Each and every day as we get to know each other and we get to build, when we talk about philosophy, talking about how we work together, how we gel, because we have a lot of different personalities and different experiences on our coaching staff, and now we'll formulate over time and put together a great performance and a great product on the field. What are the advantages of you being the elder statesman and the coaching staff, and what would you like to improve on when you guys get through the draft and get through free agency? The elder statesman, you got like I'm walking with like a little, I'm getting old. I'm only 38 now. Um, it, it does help having that experience, being in the building, and to help others out. So to expedite every anything that they need. I know when I came in a couple years ago, there was a lot of new faces in the building when it came to our coaching staff. So to help some of our coaches out when it comes to certain things that they're doing around the building, and because there's all different types of stresses when it comes to it could be good stress, bad stress. Right now, you know, as a new coaching staff, it is good stress. New opportunity. We're hitting the restart button with our football program. And that, that helps when it comes to that. Now, when you talk about what we could get better at, are you talking about like special teams? Yes. Um, you know, special teams, you know, last year, we go back to last year. We didn't have the dynamic year as we did in 2022 where we broke some franchise records when it came to block punts, touchdowns, all that stuff. But I will say this, our guys got better with reps. You know, when you talk about the roster formation, how we collaborate and make our roster, um, those things, we, the injury bug, it did help guys on defense like Nate Ladman, who was going to be a special teams player for us. He got a great opportunity to be an impact player on, on defense for us. And losing a guy like Avery Williams, well, that opened up opportunities for a guy to D. Alford who got better as the season went on. I know people can look at stats and look at, hey, you're ranked here on kickoff return, upon return, yards per return. But the one thing that you can't look at, if you guys do turn on the film, those guys did get better. We play with different lineups each and every week. And again, I don't think you'll be put in positions that you can't handle. And if you walk, turn on the film, do you see great effort? Do you guys say, see guys playing with a great attitude and a great mindset? Are they playing with technique? And we did help us win games. Now, we did want to win more games, and that's the goal moving forward. D. Alford, as a returner, he got better as the season got on. I know he had a huge role on defense, and I was very aware of that, and I didn't want to gas him. But once we got to that bye week and we started moving forward, you saw a different D. Alford back there as a returner. And you only get better with reps. That's why Avery Williams is special back there as a returner. That's why CP, when he's rolling, he's special, because he got better with reps. That's why Devin Hester, Hall of Famer, you know, D-Les not in here because he's going to probably ask me a Devin Hester question. But Devin Hester, best of all time. He got better with reps. And that's what you saw with our special teams unit. And we look to push forward and put together a better roster, uh, put together guys that – now I'll say this. Those guys that did play last year that had limited experience, they're going to even have more experience going into this season. So I am excited about how we formulate this roster going into this offseason to put together the best unit to help our offense and defense with field position and putting points on the board. When you retained with the, the Chargers staff that coaching change, um, what did you learn from that experience that you can take into this? I, I learned just to be in the present. You get the opportunity. when you, It's hard in the NFL to maintain a job. It is, whether you're a player or a coach. Because every year there's, there's more and more individuals, whether it's coaches coming from college or players coming from college or coaches coming from other teams. It's really hard to maintain that. You could get fixated on that, or you could work on staying in the present and getting better. What I'll say is I, I got the opportunity to stay in the same building, but learn a new philosophy. That was awesome. 
to be able to the transition. And it was unfortunate, you know, Mike McCoy lost lost his opportunity, but then Anthony Lynn came in, who just got took on a new position today with the Commanders. I got to learn for him for two years and learn his philosophy. Same thing here, you know. Very, very blessed to work for Coach Smith for three years, giving my first opportunity as a full-time coordinator. Now I get the opportunity, and I'm very thankful for Coach Morris to you know, keep me on staff to be the coordinator for the Falcons, and I get to learn his philosophy and, and his why and how he goes about his business. So I don't take those opportunities lightly, and it's all about myself being in the present, not worried about the past, not fixated on the future, but being locked in. Just no different than this conversation that we're having right now. I'm uh, just learning and getting better and being an opportunity to grow. And that's big. That's something that somebody can't take away from is your knowledge and your experience. And if my research serves me correctly, that was the first time the Chargers had hired a black head coach and now here with Morris. What does it mean to be a part of that history twice? I, mean, I didn't even know that. That was good. Um, it, it means the world to me, you know. And, you know, to be a person of color and then to work with a guys in a leadership position as that, and that's something down the road, you know, Lori Will and I get the opportunity to do that. My job right now is to be the best coordinator for the Falcons, but I get the opportunity to learn from Anthony Lynn. I get the opportunity to learn from Raheem Morris. And I don't take those opportunities. I, lightly when it comes to that and it's an awesome opportunity for coach Morris to be here and um, be the head coach for Atlanta Falcons no different than it was for Anthony Lynn with the, the Chargers at the time when we transitioned to LA uh, those are opportunities one of my mentors Jim Caldwell those are that's a guy I talk to a lot a lot of times when it comes to different things in my career and one of the reasons why is because the way he carried himself as a professional, both on and off the field. And I'm very excited and very blessed to be in this position to work with Coach Morris. You mentioned CP is a free agent in a month at this point. Do you want him back next year as somebody who worked with him before? I'm guessing that the staff might lean on you in terms of whether you think you can, what he can do for you guys. You know, I, I could not wait for you, that question. You, uh, you, you mentioned We have a lot. We have, yeah, hey, we have a, hey, I had the opportunity to work with a, a guy that's the best in NFL history when it comes to kickoff return. Um, we have a lot of free agents that are, you know, contracts will be up in a month. Those are uh, situations, those are conversations that are above me when it comes to that. I love all the players that I coached the last three years here, with, if we're just talking about the Atlanta Falcons. I love anybody that we have in the building. I love coaching those guys because I know that they're going to lay it out on the line, put their best foot forward, play with great technique, give it everything that they got to help the Atlanta Falcons. But those are conversations and those are questions um, that are going to Terry and Coach Morris when it comes to that. But I'll tell you this, CP did a hell of a job for us his three years here, whether you talk about his role in offense, his role in special teams. He helped us win games and he made impactful plays. Uh, in terms of last question, the return situation of Avery is coming off of an injury. Do you anticipate that he would at least kind of still be in that home returner spot? And then also, if you guys don't bring CP back, do you see somebody who can handle the returner if need be? Well, you know, when CP was down for a couple of games the last two se my first two seasons, 21 22, Avery did return for us. And that's what he did at Boise State. Now, whoever we have on the roster, whoever is going to be up, when we can talk about that 48, which will be months from now, we'll have a formulated plan to put the best guys back there when it comes to the, the, our return game situation. And we talk about the return game, it's not just going to be critical for that person back there as a return. It's those other 10 guys helping that guy out. But those are conversations. I mean, that's too early to say right now to predict that as we get into OTAs and the training camp and we get ready for the season, I'll have a better answer for you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Defensively, Raheem has said that you will call plays. You haven't done that at the NFL level before. What's the difference potentially between calling plays at a college level and the NFL level that's going to be a learning curve for you? Yeah, you know, um, first of all, I'll say this. I've been preparing for this since 1999, uh, my first year as coach. And uh, I was an undergrad assistant at Eastern Washington University. This has been a dream of mine uh, for my whole coaching career. You know, most guys, their dream is to be a head football coach. Uh, my dream is to be a defensive coordinator in the National Football League. And so um, this has been an awesome journey, and I'm so excited uh, for this moment and this opportunity. Um, 
call them plays, you know, in college and, and the NFL, there's not a there's not a huge difference. Um, what's different right now is the NFL game is going from two back more to one back. I mean, back when I was in the NFL years ago, a lot of two back and the college game was one back. And so what you're seeing is a lot of these college quarterbacks with all the spread open offenses that have happened in the last decade, all those college quarterbacks are graduating from college. And guess where they're coming? They're coming to the National Football League. And so really the cool thing is a lot of the, a lot of the offenses that we were stopping back in college over the last decade, those offenses are now trickling up to the NFL. And so a lot of plays that we're seeing and that everybody's seeing around the league are a lot of plays that you saw at Oregon, at Ohio State. Um, and so uh, there's actually a lot of recall of, 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 of some of these uh, offenses that we have to stop um, that I've seen before. Now, the NFL coaches do a great job of honing in and changing and, and even making better those plays that happen at the college level. Hey, Josh Kendall with The Athletic. Why was this your dream? Why was this your dream instead of being a head coach? Yeah. Um, I love defensive football. I, I love uh, the competitive t t uh, competitiveness of stopping an offense. Um, it really uh, gets the juices flowing. And I'm very, very passionate about football, uh, about defensive football. Um, is there something that traces back to, do you think? I mean, it's just me being a defensive player, I think. Uh, you know, my, my whole life, just being a defensive player, uh, playing on that side of the ball, being a defensive captain in high school, being a defensive captain in, in college. I wanted to play at this level. I wasn't good enough. Uh, I was too short, too slow. Um, but I did like to play physical. Um, I love the schematics of the game. I uh, got really close with my defensive coordinator in college, Jerry Graybill, uh, who's still a, a mentor of mine. I learned a lot from him. And I just, I was always passionate about, about defensive football. Um, and when I set out to my journey to, to be a football coach, I was like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. Uh, I, I want to be, I want to call plays at the highest level. Is there a 30 second synopsis that I might understand of your, what your defensive philosophy is? Yeah. It, this is what I'm hoping uh, on opening day in September. Hopefully, hopefully we're playing home here uh, that you would see our defense play fast, play free and play physical. They're going to play fast because we, we're going to get fast players, uh, but they're going to play free because they know the defense. When we call that defense, they can they can diagnose, they can read and react and they go fast. And they're going to play physical because this defensive game has to be physical. You got to be able to get off blocks and go tackle. Um, so quickly, fast, free, physical. Where's the line between free and doing enough that you can contain an NFL offense? Yeah, so so free free is having a free mind of the call is not too complicated. That's what the that's what the free is, and so um, our defense uh, defense that I've been around over the years that I've coached have looked very very complicated to offenses, but it's been simple for our guys, and that's the balance. You want to you want to look complicated to your opponents, but our guys know it inside and out, so they can play free. Thank you, Joe yep. Patrick, with ninety nine the game. Um, just having worked with Raheem, well, how, how has he influenced you, and, and how did you know him coming here, and how, how did this come together? Yeah, so I'll tell you tell you guys a quick story. I was uh, so I was my first year in the NFL was two thousand six in the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, Raheem had just left, and Mike Tomlin just left the, the Minnesota Vikings. Raheem went to Kansas State, and um, I was hired as the assistant defensive back coach. And uh, we had a rough year that year. Our lead DB coach was fired. Um, I was hoping to get the lead DB job. Of course, being a competitor, I was like, hey, I can take over this room. Um, and Raheem came back. I did not know Raheem at all. And so, you know, of course, I was disappointed. I was like, man, I really wanted that job. Um, but my first interaction with Raheem, he comes into my office, shakes my hand. He says, hey, Jimmy, my name is Raheem Morris. I know you wanted this job, but we're going to do this thing together. And from right from that point, we, 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 were, we were a bond. He took me under his wing, showed me all the ropes of how him and Mike, Tom, Mike Tomlin ran that room since 2002. And uh, the amount of information that I learned from him was just invaluable. And uh, really from that, from that point on, we've, uh, we've had a strong bond off the field, but also on the field of how he handled that and his wealth of knowledge of defensive football. Uh, but just the human being, he's one of one. There's nobody like him. There's nobody that ever be like him. 
the energy that he brings, the vibe that he brings. He's never had a bad day in his life. But then also the football knowledge, uh, it's incredible. He's one of one. Kenny Bailey Burmaster, uh, sports director at Atlanta News First in town. Uh, I'm curious, when you look at this roster defensively, what excites you? What do you see? Yeah, so the first, just looking from a, you know, really a, a wide lens from above, just looking at it. Right when I got hired, I turned on the film. We actually didn't have a lot of crossover with the Atlanta Falcons when we were in L.A., uh, we just didn't didn't watch them. We didn't have a lot of similar opponents. And so right when I turned on the film, I saw a defense that played physical and they played fast. And you could see them playing together um, without even looking at one individual. And I, I text Raheem right away. I was like, whoa, we got some we got some pieces to work with here. And uh, to their credit, and, I, and you know, to Jerry Gray, who we, we kept here, uh, to Dave Huxtable, senior or defensive assistant, who, who we kept here. I've told them multiple times what a great job they did last year. Uh, you could see they played with an edge. They played fast. They played physical. And those are the things that we're going to build off of because that's the identity that Raheem and I want for our defense. Off of that, too, I want to ask about Jerry Gray because he's someone who seems to be pretty well-respected in the league. And a lot of <clears throat> players have just discussed in depth what he does for their game. Uh, what did you see from Jerry Gray in retaining him and what he does specifically with DBs? Oh, yeah. So the first thing was, like I just said, mentioned, we, we watched the film. I text Raheem. I was like, these DBs are coached up. You, you can tell. They know how to play technique. They know how to leverage the ball. They know how to attack the ball. Um, but then, of course, we got to do our due diligence, and we have to go interview all the coaches, which we did. And uh, got tremendous respect for Jerry Gray, everything he's done in this league um, as a player and a coach. And uh, he knocked the interview out of the ballpark, which you could, uh, which you could probably see what, what, what would happen. And so we're very, very excited that he's able to run that room and continue to run that room and continue to build off what he's done here. Coach, you're an elite uh, fan. If, what could you tell us about scheme? A lot of teams want to be multiple, but do you lean towards 3-4? You have Aaron Donald out there that yep. certainly dictates a lot. But 3-4, four, 4-3, four, do you have any preference where you would like to lean, even if you do want to be multiple? Yeah, no, uh, you, you took the words out of my mouth. We're definitely going to be multiple. Um, you know, we've been in a bunch of different schemes, Raheem and I. Uh, we've been in 4-3. We've been in 3-4. We've done both. Uh, you know, we're really reactive to what we're seeing on offense. That's what you have to do as a defensive coach. You know, what, what personnel are they bringing out on the, on the grass so we can match that personnel? Um, but, you know, if you, if you just want a nice, easy answer, uh, it'll be a, a base 3-4. Uh, for sure, uh, but very multiple as soon as teams go, uh, you know, 11 uh, or less personnel. Uh, you could see us in a lot of different fronts with various coverages, and uh, we're going to lean on all of our experience that we've had over these years and also some of the stuff that uh, uh, the 2023 defense did here as well. Um, you know, we're, we, we want to make sure that it's, this is going to be a collective effort. Um, I've been around some great coaches. Raheem's been around some great coaches. Our defensive staff have been around some great coaches. Uh, but we're going to boil this thing down to what our players do best and what's going to present a lot of problems for our opponents. Jimmy, you okay. Zach with the uh, ABC station in town. Welcome to Atlanta. You mentioned the great coaches. Uh, as an associate head coach with McVay, what's one thing that you kind of, working so close with him, philosophy, coaching, leadership-wise, that you take with you? Yeah. Well, first of all, what a, what a valuable year that I had being on offense for the first time in my career last year with the, with the LA Rams. Um, Credit to Sean McVay for allowing me to, to, to be with him and, and be with him on that side of the ball. Um, such, a, such a growth experience for me. And if you had to boil it down to one thing was his leadership through the ups and downs of the season and the way Sean handled that. Um, we had an extremely young team. Um, his leadership uh, through the OTAs, through the offseason program, his leadership through uh, our three-game losing streak never wavered. He stayed the same. And um, we go, you know, we lose three games going to the bye week. We could have easily uh, went the other way, but then we ended up going seven and one after the bye. And it was really because of Sean's leadership and, and how he displayed that in front of the team. And he never wavered. And quick follow up on that. Was, I think it was that the only year you've ever been on the offensive side of the ball. And then how does that one year help you? As <laughs> yeah. Um, that, yes, you're, you're correct. That's my only year I've ever been on offense. And, um, you know, Sean allowed me to be with the quarterbacks. Uh, I was within the quarterback room and um, in all the offensive installs and uh, and then helping our offense understand 
what our opponent's defenses were trying to do to us and how to attack uh, our opponent's defenses. It was an extraordinary year, uh, one, one for the books. Uh, we, we, Sean and I had, had a lot of fun together, and um, our relationship grew. You know, we didn't know each other uh, until Raheem introduced us, and um, we really hit it off, and uh, we'll always look back on this, on this last year as a, a very fond year for both of us. And a huge growth year for me. Sorry. I've got two questions for you. First, uh, have you been in touch with Lance Campbell at all? Is he's kind of one of the bigger free agents that you guys have. Correct. Yeah, so our whole staff right now, we're actually looking at our current roster right now. Um, uh, we're just looking at the guys currently on the roster. We'll start to look at free agents, but those type of phone calls will happen in the future. Washington. What did you learn from what was, it seemed like fairly tumultuous, I guess, tenure? What did you learn from that and, and kind of take from, from those two seasons? Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, every year in this business, uh, you're going to learn something. And since I started coaching in 1999, I've, I've learned things and, and put them away and learned things and put them away. And, and there's growth. Uh, there's growth going through winning but there's also tremendous growth when you go through adversity and you know those two years were you know that was right so you get hired and then COVID happens and so my two years was during COVID uh, which was uh, hard on all of us um, and you know there's a lot of things that um, you know I wish would have changed I know we didn't win enough uh, went seven and six would like to have won more games uh, but that just didn't happen and so now you, you reflect, what could I have done better? What could I have done to staff-wise? Whatever, whatever it may be, and then you move forward. Jim, in the quarterback room, what is this team getting with Zach? Yeah. <laughs> you, so, Zach, you, from what you're going to get is a brilliant football coach. Um, a coach who is uh, able to sit there with Matthew Stafford, who I believe is a future Hall of Famer, the best quarterback that I've ever been around in my whole career. Um, and he has a great demeanor about him, talking about Zach, uh, with a high-level player like that uh, during adverse situations, uh, during tough meetings, uh, maybe after a tough game, um, and who's able to, to deal with a, uh, a high-level competitor. Um, I saw Zach navigate through those rough waters um, in a very easygoing uh, uh, way about himself that that was a calming influence uh, for the whole room. Uh, but then when it's just him and I also just talking ball, you're going to get a guy that, that knows offensive ball, knows how to move the ball down the field, uh, run, pass, and, and cause a lot of problems uh, for defenses. So I'm looking forward to us going head-to-head -head here, coming up in OTAs. <laughs> Ask about Washington, the circumstances of your dismissal was when you have the opportunity to say whatever you want to say about it. And also, I think a lot of fans here, like, that might be the only thing they know about you. And what would you tell people that you know, know about you from the, you know, one specific part of your, your career? You know, I think um, you know, we were very proud of the, the roster that we assembled there. Um, obviously, they did a tremendous job this last year. I loved all the, uh, the phone messages and the text messages I, I received from the families. Um, and the players that are currently on the roster. And they almost got it done with that national championship. And that was the goal that we set out uh, when, I, when I took over. Uh, you know, it was unfortunate that myself and our staff couldn't have, have finished the job. Uh, but Kalen, who's a good friend of mine, uh, I'm glad he was able to come in with his staff and, and add some pieces and push them almost to the top. Can you talk about uh, being prepared since 1999? Coach Moore said a similar thing, just being ready since. He left Tampa Bay to be a head coach. What does that say about you all's just connectivity mindset of just being um, prepared for the now? Yeah, so I think in being, not being prepared at 99, I was definitely wasn't prepared in 1999, but uh, starting that preparation, starting that goal setting, you know, set that goal like, hey, this is where I want to be. And, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of, lot of failure, um, a lot of research, a lot of studying. Um, a lot of success. How do you build on that success uh, to get to these to get to these moments? And um, you know, it's been a, it's been a long journey, but it's been a fun journey. 
And what's so cool about coming in this next season, there's going to be success. There's also going to be some failure. And how, do you, and how we're going to respond to some of that adversity is going to make or break um, our season. And uh, Raheem and I have both been through adversity. We've been through success. And we know how to handle both of those. What did you do with your year off? So I uh, traveled across the NFL landscape. Um, I've always wanted to go back to the NFL really since 2011. Visited nine clubs, um, let them all know, hey, this is, this is where I want to be. And uh, studied, studied their offense, studied their defense, studied the landscape of the league, what was going on, um, what offenses look like, what defenses look like. Tr and like I said earlier, tremendous change since 2011. Uh, you, go, you go back to 2011, every NFL club had a fullback on their roster. You look now, maybe three or four. Um, the, college the college game influence has definitely heavily changed uh, the way offenses are, are deploying, which is how defenses now, and that's, that's how defenses have to react to that, right? And so whatever they bring out, we have to be able to react to it. Uh, so that's what I did during that year off. Hi, nice to meet you, AtlantaFalcons.com. Um, you mentioned watching film of this defense. What do you think is the next step for them as they took a giant one this past season? Yeah, so it's going to be uh, some building some pieces, obviously, uh, around the whole defense of, of, of off of players that are coming back. It starts with the players. Uh, you got to have great players. Without great players, uh, it doesn't matter what scheme we run. If we don't have great players, it's not gonna it's not gonna look very good. And so we're going to add some pieces there. Um, but then it's just going to be more of a mentality of, of having proper angles to the football, still playing fast, free, and physical with those proper angles, and trusting the bro your brother next to you. And as soon as we can build that trust through these OTAs and into training camp, um, I'm hoping you're going to see even faster defense, a more physical defense, and a defense is going to take the ball away. When you look at that film, I'm sure Jesse Bates stands out quite a bit. What does a player like that do for the excitement level and just building around him? Yeah, what a, what a fantastic football player. Um, you know, he uh, one, one of our main goals is going to score, get the ball back. We're going to try to we're trying to get that ball, and we're going to try to go score. And you can see the ball skills that Jesse has um, are really top in the league. Uh, but if we can't do that, we want to make sure we, we we get that ball back for our offense, uh, whether that's through a fumble, whether that's through an interception whether that's stopping guys on four downs or going three and out. And so Jesse Bates is a, Jesse Bates is a very good piece to start with. Jesse, from Greg and Jared, before he got injured, what did you do? What's your assessment? Electric, electric. Uh, knock off in the run game, run stuffer, and it gives you extreme pass rush interior. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Nice you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. What is your Right off the bat, I love it. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, no, it's uh, that's a great question, and we're on day two here, collaborating with these these coaches. We got a great staff that we put together. Uh, that's something that we're going to be working on the next couple months. And so, to say we have an exact idea of exactly what that's going to look like right now wouldn't be fair. But the things that we're going to strive for is it's always going to be about these players at first and foremost, and. How can we provide the most clarity for those guys to just cut it loose on game day? And that's what it's always going to be about, how it exactly looks like right now, February 14th. Not fair to say, but uh, it's going to be about these guys and, and just these guys cutting it loose on Sundays where uh, they have clear and concise plans and, and what they're trying to execute. Uh, and that's always going to be at the forefront of our offense. And following that, court, the quarterback position, what is, for whatever offensive scheme you would prefer to run, as you figure this out, what type of quarterback do you feel like makes the most sense for what you're trying to do, especially since sure. all your, at least, NFL experience is coming from the round? Sure, yeah, I think when you look at that position, it's that guy's got to be the most competitive guy in the room. They got to have mental, mental and physical toughness. Uh, they got to be able to think. They got to have mental capacity. They got to be able to throw the football accurately. They got to have the inventory of throws. Uh, pace, touch, they got to be able to drive it when they need it. Uh, and then they got to have poise, and they got to have competitive greatness. These games are so close in the NFL. Uh, you got to have a guy that wants the ball in his hands in those crunch time moments. And so that's what we're looking for. 
whether it's a pocket guy, whether it's a guy that can move around a little bit, we're just looking for the best guy that, that we can do. And I certainly know that the guys that are here, we're evaluating everybody. And so we, you know, Taylor and, and Desmond, we're looking at those guys, all options are on the table, but uh, those are the qualities that we'll look for in terms of somebody that can lead this team. And uh, excited to get that process going with, you know, everybody. We got some great guys that have been around the quarterback room, whether they played it, coached it. You know, Raheem and I have spent a lot of time together the last three years talking about quarterbacks. So uh, it'll be a great process. We're going through that, like I said, second day on the job, just hoping that I can remember my login for my computer and uh, we'll, we'll get to moving on that. But uh, looking forward to that, that process and what it looks like. Raheem called Matthew Stafford a, a no doubt know it when you see it quarterback. I wonder what that <clears throat> phrase means to you. What do you see? And you're like, that, that's it. You might not be able to put it in words. Sure. That's it. Oh, that's a great question. I think first and foremost, how somebody throws the football and what that looks like. If you look at Matthew Stafford, that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. And I think if God himself came down here and said, I want somebody to throw the football, it should look like Matthew Stafford. So I think uh, that's that's certainly what you're looking at first and foremost. Those guys just have the instincts, the feel for the game, and uh, you know the stuff that you can't really you know, put into words, sometimes they got it. And so those are the guys that you're looking for. Uh, Matthew Stafford has been that guy from his time at Highland Park at Georgia, number one pick. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, certainly been uh, very fortunate to work with a guy like that. And, and uh, you know, just, just forever thankful for my time with him and knowing what a special, special player he is. What's Some history that you like to do uh, fundamentally in offense that no matter, you know, what your personnel are, what the the scheme is for that week or the game plan is for that week. What are some things to say, hey, this is what we're about no matter who we got on the field? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is we want to play fast. We want to be physical. We want to be aggressive at all times. And like I said, we just want these guys to cut it loose and go play ball. And that's going to be at the forefront of it at all times. Um, like I mentioned, the scheme is the scheme, but the coaching of the fundamentals, the techniques, all the details that we'll get into uh, that we're all excited to jump in right now, knowing that we don't get our players here for another couple months. And that's, you know, the tough part of it. But those guys need a break. And uh, we'll all be back with some great urgency, ready to roll. But uh, certainly at the forefront, I've, I've been saying it, but like we just want these guys to just cut it loose. Go play, have fun. You guys are NFL players. You get a great opportunity every single Sunday to go to go play in front of great crowds. And uh, that's that's going to be at the forefront at all times. Bailey Burmaster, Atlanta News First Sports Director, welcome. Um, I'm Thank curious, you. when working with Matt, what he taught you as a coach that you feel like you can take into this position now? Here. That's a great question because he, you know, Matthew and I were teammates in Detroit. Uh, I'm a year older than Matthew. We're great friends. He is smartest guy I've ever been around. And so that <clears throat> knowing what you got to be prepared for as a coach each and every day, knowing he's going to come in on on Wednesday and he's going to have seen all the film and he's got a great memory. And so you're going to be able to need you're going to have to recall every single play that that you've seen on film that week. And so he challenges you as a coach in so many ways and situations and uh, just the collaborative effort that it was yeah. with Matthew over the past few years has been awesome. and. He certainly has taught me a ton about the position. And hey, that this is kind of a lot to see right here. What if we tweaked it and did this? And that's where uh, when you have a player of that caliber and, and somebody that has that much experience, you work with them and, and you tweak things and you're constantly bouncing ideas. And so uh, that's a luxury to have somebody that has that experience, but have learned a ton from Matthew. And, and uh, you know, like I said, forever grateful to, for the time I had with him. What did, you, did you learn? Did you ask about Atlanta at all? Obviously, he lived here for a long time. Did you give you any yeah, he uh, not really. He said, you know, he had a house here. He sold it a couple years ago. He said, I wish I would have kept it so I could have sold it to you. I said, I wouldn't have been able to afford it. So I appreciate it. But he, uh, yeah, he, I know, you know, Kelly being from here, I know Chad Hall and, uh, you know, Clint Bowling was a, a roommate of mine in Cincinnati. He's, you know, from Georgia, obviously from Georgia. You know, have played golf with him a bunch down here when I was roommates with him in Cincinnati. So I've known the area, been down here a handful of times. Um, but yeah, Matthew was like, hey man, fired up for you. Uh, it's a great city, great place to live, great place to raise a family. Um, and so all those things are, are great things about the, the city of Atlanta. Andy Reid talked about when he 
kind of coach in, in, in Philadelphia how before he got to call plays, he did to copious notes in the film rooms with Mike Holmgren and with Bill Walsh. What do you uh, take from Sean McVay? What do you want to steal? What do you want to copy that you also can infuse your style of coaching in? Sure. I think, I don't know if there's really one thing or if it's just a collection of things over the last five years. Sean is an open book at all times, and he just wants the most out of his players and most out of his coaches, and he has been an open door, uh, open book throughout the whole thing. And you know, his process of what he does on Friday night leading up to a game and how he wants to sequence the game. Some of those things that, uh, you know, he's obviously very special in that regard. And so uh, he, there's only one Sean. And so just trying to do the best that I can and, and definitely have learned a ton just from, you know, whether it's leadership principles and, uh, you know, packaging plays and, and all the marriage of the run in the past, all those things that I believe in because it's been what I've known from the last five years definitely will – uh, we'll use here and you know forever grateful for Sean and, and him giving me that that opportunity as the first first job I got in coaching so um, I learned a ton from him not only football wise X and O's but uh, you know off the field as well. Zach I'm Zach with the ABC station in town. Yep um, nice to meet you. Your last year in the league is 2013 then you mentioned Sean in 2019 what, what was that gap and was the dream aspirations always going back to this level of I'm sure yeah that you know, without getting into too much detail, I, you know, got done playing, um, you know, wanted to get into coaching, had a few opportunities to get into college, ended up working with some quarterbacks uh, in that period of time, just kind of one-on-one -on -one training and uh, ended up loving that. Uh, got connected with, I was dying to just have access to film, so I got connected with Pro Football Focus. Uh, those guys uh, having the access to all the NFL, the college film, and kind of going to work with those guys. You know, Neil Hornsby was the guy that, that you know, started PFF. Uh, I just reached out and wrote an email to them and, and got going. Bobby Sloak was the first guy that called me. And so I uh, was able to stay up with the X's and O's of, of the NFL game and watching quarterback play around the league uh, for those years while also kind of training quarterbacks on the side. But knowing I wanted to get in the NFL at some point, and, and it just had become a time where – you know, to be honest, I met met my wife and knowing that it takes a special person if you are going into coaching. And so she was like, hey, if you're ready to roll, like, let's do it. And so uh, having her support throughout the whole thing was what it was all about. And it just added up uh, to be the right time and certainly fortunate to to jump into a situation with Sean as, as the first job. Zach, you talked about being collaborative with Matt Stafford and him being at the caliber of his game when he plays quarterback. Whatever the Falcons end up doing at quarterback, what do you feel like is your strength to help bridge that gap of whatever caliber athlete they are and reaching their full potential? Sure, I think the first thing is just building a relationship where they can trust what we're doing, and it's going to be TJ Yates, myself, DJ. You know, the guys that are in that that quarterback room. Um, that's all of us together, and so I think building that relationship, that foundation of, of trust, and uh, it's a quarterback room is a tight knit, knit room. And so I think uh, the experiences over the last five years and, and being around a bunch of different quarterbacks is definitely going to be uh, beneficial. We played with four quarterbacks in 2022, you know, Jared Goff, we had Baker Mayfield, we had Matthew, we had, you know, John Wolford. And so game planning and seeing how you can tailor it week to week without losing your identity as an offense uh, has been valuable. Has it been perfect at times? Absolutely not. But you certainly learn a lot along the way, and I'm going to learn a ton on the job, on the go. That's just naturally going to happen. But um, you know, certainly all those experiences add up to, you know, getting you ready for for this position right here. To your point, what is what is patience coming in, in that? If you have a rookie, you haven't seen anything. If you guys end up being a veteran, you've been around the block. So sure. Different, different styles of coaching. So. Yeah, I think um, you're going to coach those guys very similar. You're going to be. Hey, we're not letting any details slip by. Whether it's a veteran guy, that's what you know. Matthew Stafford, he wanted to be coached. All these guys want to be coached. Doesn't matter, you know, if you're in your 15th year as a rookie. Certainly, building up a rookie quarterback looks a little bit different, like you're saying, than than a veteran. But um, you know, it's a day by day process. You're you're not thinking much past that next day. And, and to be honest, I know it sounds like you know, cliche, but that's just the truth with those those young guys and then the veteran guys as well, because every year is a new year, present different challenges, whether it's your own personnel or, uh, you know, going up against a different scheme that specific week. And so 
um, all those things, it really is just a day-to-day -day process, whether it's a veteran or a, a young guy. You, uh, you retained a lot of the offensive pitchers from the prior staff. Boy, when did the decision to, I mean, obviously, move TJ traditionally, but like, what were the decision to keep so many of those guys? Yeah, there was really not much decision to be made. Those guys are great coaches, and that's where, you know, Terry Fontenot and, and their group, uh, you know, kind of, you know, forefront of that, and, and we got to meet those guys, and it was no brainer right away. All you got to do is throw on the tape with, with Ledford and see how those guys play. And so uh, getting to talk to him, uh, like I said, the, the tape speaks for itself and how those guys play together, how they play for him uh, was, was incredible. And so uh, that was, you know, shoot, there was really no decision. We just, we knew right away that that's, that's what was going to happen. Same thing with Michael Petrie, running backs. Uh, I mean, what a great guy. You be, you're around Michael Petrie and uh, just my limited inter interactions. I'm excited to work with him, knowing the, the relationship he's built with those backs in that room. Uh, Sean Flaherty in the offensive line room. Uh, he's, he's, I know, been with Ledford for a long time and provides a ton of value. Uh, and then TJ is a guy I've known since 2008 uh, Manning camp. Um, we were both in college, have always stayed together, you know, stayed in touch over the years. And he's, you know, I know see it through the same lens as, as TJ. And so that's definitely some comfort for, for me coming into this, uh, knowing that, you know, the QB spot with that position uh, is so vital and, and just he's an easy communicator. He's a great guy. Uh, he's super smart. Obviously, he's got some great experience in the receiver room. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just excited to, to work all collectively together. Zach, I know that there's um, a lot of the uh, work on the schemes done during the offseason and for each game, you know, there's game plans that a lot of the install goes on during the week, but on game day, there's play call. Uh, kind of what's your philosophy on that? I know you work with, with Sean, you work with some other people. What's your philosophy on it? And, um, are you looking forward to that? Yeah, certainly looking forward to it. And it's going to be a process just like everything else. And that's where I'm looking forward to, you know, the spring and starting right now, putting together the plans. And then really, I'm going to be stealing reps as well throughout the spring and throughout training camp. And Raheem's going to be great uh, in terms of helping me out with different situations and putting your yourself in those game-like moments anytime you can, whether it's OTAs or, or mini camp or working in training camp. So. Uh, these guys are getting reps. I'll be stealing reps as well, and we'll be all be putting this whole thing together. As you, uh, you prepare for kind of the roster. scrutiny of the, the play calling, you know, that's the number one top sure. fan. This play calling. Yeah, no, that's play fair. It's, it bad, comes bad with play, it. You know I mean? Absolutely. It comes with it. Um, you know, I would never get too high, never get too low. You know, inevitably, the, the ebbs and flows of the season come and go no matter what. You know, 2021, we won the Super Bowl. We lost three games in a row. It, Felt like the sky's fall, you know. So, all those things come with NFL football. It's hard every single week is a grind, uh, but that's just that's part of the part of the job, and that's part of everybody's job here is, is to put the best product out on the field and, and let these players go play and uh, know that there's you know that's certainly just part of the deal. I know you said it's only been two days on the job, but when you see a guy like Bijan at your disposal, it's kind of getting excited tonight, just drawing a place for him and what he can bring to this offense. Yeah, absolutely. He's um, you know, I saw Bijan play. We had a bye week in 2022 when I was with the Rams. Uh, went back to Oklahoma State where I went to school, and they were playing Texas. Bijan had about 180 yards of total offense. Seemed like every time he touched the football, something good was going to happen. And so that was my first exposure to him. I watched Big 12 football, um, you know, all throughout. But uh, seeing him play in person, up close, I was like, this guy's unbelievable. And then you study him throughout the draft. Uh, you realize what a special player he is uh, with the ball in his hands. There's so many things he can do. There's nothing he can't do. And that's what that's what gets you excited. And then uh, just getting to talk to him the other day, what a great what a great guy. You know, these guys are these guys have done a great job of just drafting the right type of people, the, the offensive line, the skill guys. Uh, you, you look across the board, and we just have a bunch of great guys that love football. They want to get better. Uh, and just hearing the eagerness, you know, just talking to him the other day, uh, I'm excited to get to work. I got goosebumps thinking about it because knowing that we still got a couple months, you know, to, to wait. But uh, certainly excited to work with a guy like Bijan. Is there time for one more? When you look at Bijan and maybe even Kyle Pence because the last staff used them or tried to use them in so many different ways. Is that something you think when you develop your offensive scheme is possible or do you see it more? 
as linear would be the better term? Yeah, that's, for a guy like Pitts or a guy like that's a great question. I don't have the exact answer for you right now. Um, certainly, I think Kyle's a tight end. I think Bijan's back. And those guys are going to get their touches, you know, how they get their touches. And so uh, that's part of the process we're putting together right now. But um, I've, I view those guys as, shoot, they're versatile, but those guys can play just tight end. Those guys can play just back. We'll have formation versatility to move them all over and, and certainly uh, try to get the most out of what they do. But uh, those guys are, are very special players and, and just excited to, to get going with them. What was your conversation with Des? What's that? Um, yeah, just real brief. Yeah, no, it, I'll keep that kind of you know under the under wraps for right now. But um, I'm excited to to watch a little bit more of Des. To be honest, haven't seen a ton uh, yet. Just still kind of working through the process there. But uh, yeah, definitely connecting with all those guys is is going to be a great deal. And so I uh, look forward to doing that. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.